Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms. Any of you guys that have been following along know I've had an issue with my tractor just randomly dying. Although it's not that random because it seems to be when it's been running a while and I'm not in the seat and I'm operating the backhoe. Whenever the backhoe moves the tractor, it shifts, it will kill the tractor. And I think it's been a matter of the neutral safety switch losing connection. So I've got a replacement neutral safety switch. But in the meantime, I'm doing a diagnostic right now to eliminate some possible causes of the issue. I put a jumper wire in the seat safety switch. I'll show you in a little bit how I did that. But for now, I put that jumper in and the tractor's been running at a high idle for 49 minutes and it hasn't shut off. So since this first happened, it's never ran that long without shutting off. But I'm going to go operate the backhoe and make sure that doesn't cause it to shut off. Once I've determined that putting that jumper in there will allow me to use the tractor like normal, I'm going to continue trying to diagnose the actual problem. So I'm going to go operate the, the backhoe controls a little bit and see what happens. The pattern with this has been that once the tractor is warmed up, it will just occasionally die for no reason. And if you're doing something to shake the tractor, especially moving the outriggers on the backhoe, it will die constantly. So my plan was to let this warm up for 20 to 30 minutes, but I let it go longer. And I waited until it was fully warmed up to try to do something to make it die. Basically, the number one thing that would trigger it is when I lifted the tractor with the outrigger on that side. So I did that a few times and it ran long enough. I'm convinced that we now know we've eliminated some possible issues like a fuel problem. Could have had stuff in the fuel filter and tipping it or running it that long was causing that to, to block the fuel flow. Different suggestions that have been put out there, but we now know it's electrical and it has something to do with not being in the seat, which is what I already thought. It looks like, most likely, it could have been the actual seat safety switch, but I don't think so. I think the tractor is thinking it comes out of neutral whenever I lift that. And so if you're in the seat, it's okay if it comes out of neutral. So now I can use my tractor as much as I want, but I'm going to continue diagnosing the same problem by removing the jumper and replacing the neutral safety switch. Now as we look at how I bypass the seat safety switch, the next question is, is it a good idea? Because that switch is there for a reason. Only you can decide if you want to bypass that. A lot of people bypass that switch because it's an annoyance. If you lean forward in your seat, it kills the tractor. But the obvious danger is if you were to flip your tractor and it keeps running because it thinks you're in the seat, or if you think your tractor's in neutral and get up and it's not in neutral and the tractor takes off on you. So you're losing that safety protection, but you're saving yourself a hassle like I've been going through. So right here is your safety switch. That plugs in right here. So all I did was unplug it. I made a jumper wire. Plugged in here. And that makes the machine think that I'm in the seat the entire time. So I'm not advising that. That's completely your decision. But now it's still raining a little bit. I think it's going to quit here in a minute. And then we'll try working on that neutral switch. Well, I waited half the day for it to quit raining and it doesn't look like that's going to happen. So I've cleared a spot, brought the tractor in the shop. This is the neutral safety switch. It's just got a ball right here. It looks like that switch pushes the ball, makes contact in there, opens and closes the circuit. I was looking down here where it goes. See if you can see that. Okay, so let's see if we can see this. That little bit of movement right there is all we have, so that doesn't seem excessive. Right below that 
is the neutral safety switch. And it seems like this plug right here, seems like the, the plug itself may be a little bit damaged. Here's, here's the plug and the retaining clip wasn't very firmly seated on the plug. I'm gonna see if I can get that pulled out. I definitely won't be able to get a camera angle on removing that. But I'm gonna go ahead and switch that safety switch out. That was not especially hard to get out. It'd be a lot easier to reach if you had that wheel off, but I've got wheel weights and fluid in the tires. It'd be too heavy. Now, as I look at this, the odds that this is bad and all it does is push that little ball down. The odds of that being bad, I would say, are pretty low. This isn't cracked or there's nothing in it. So, much more likely in my mind that the, the connector is bad, not the switch. So, we may still have the same problem after swapping that out. But, I'm going to check something off the list. So I'm going to plug the wire back in on this, make sure it's plugged in well, and then I'm going to take the jumper wire off of the seat safety switch and see how it does. All right, we're hooked up. One other thing to keep in mind is when you pull that switch out, it goes into the transmission, so you're gonna leak hydraulic fluid. So you wanna have the other one ready to get in that hole pretty quick before you leak out too much. I don't think I leaked enough out that will actually be low on fluid, but you just want to have that ready when you take it out. So here's our puddle. Taking the jumper wire out. We're started up. I would say it needs to run 20 to 30 minutes before I'm going to feel like it's even worth testing. So. And it also seems to do it more when it was idled up. So I'm going to throttle it up and open up the doors in the shop and wait 30 minutes and see what we get. on the backhoe was the trigger for killing the tractor before. Didn't make any sense, had me confused. I think it was just moving the tractor just right where maybe that switch was shorting out. It's only been about 15 minutes, so I feel good about it, but I'm gonna let it run longer and repeat the test before we call it good. We are at 25 minutes. It would appear that the neutral safety switch was bad. So I'm really glad that this is not a major problem. It's not gonna be expensive or cause me a lot of downtime. I already made the appointment for Monday and I'm almost due for a scheduled service. I prepaid for three years of service and we're two years in. So I might as well go ahead and go get that service done. But this is a big weight off my shoulders worrying about if there was a major problem here. I appreciate you guys for watching the video, especially if you followed along with all of them or you've been a long time subscriber. That's awesome and I appreciate it. I'm gonna put links over here to a couple more of our videos if you wanna check those out and I'll see you next time.